Ann Coulter is, of course, a well-known conservative commentator and the author of 10 New York Times bestsellers, including her latest titled Adios America. In the text, Ann outlines why she believes immigration is one of America's greatest threats, an idea that has apparently been embraced by some leaders on the right, including current GOP frontrunner Donald Trump. And every day it seems somebody else lines up behind him. And good to have you on this program. So good to be here. Let me, let me jump right in, because I want to make the most of the time we have. And I, and I hope, let me just say up front, I hope that this conversation can be as much about humanity and dignity as it is about politics and polling. Because mm -hmm. I, I, I want to try to better understand, to mm -hmm. the extent that I can, I, I suspect viewers might want to better understand the motivation behind your rhetoric and, for that, for that matter, Donald Trump and others. Let me just start, though, with, with the titles of some of your books. This one, Adios America the left's plan to turn our country into a third world hellhole. You really believe that? Yes. Uh, now, part of what I'm doing, okay. obviously, I'm is to have zippy titles. So it. we'll leave that aside. Right. You do need interesting rhetoric. Winston Churchill had yeah. interesting rhetoric. Mm -hmm. In fact, I'm always asking Thomas Sowell if I could write the titles to his books because they have things like basic economics. Mm -hmm. Mr. Soul, please mm -hmm. let me do your titles. Mm -hmm. um, but as I explain in the book, what happened is it was the change with the 1965 Immigration Act. People get weepy over, you know, their immigrants arriving at Ellis Island. Mm -hmm. We're getting a very different kind of immigrant now. And it began as a specific plan to bring in lots of more Democratic voters. And it worked. But now, unfortunately, the Republicans are going along with it. And I wish more people were joining Donald Trump, who, by the way, asked for and received an advanced copy of this book. Um, but they won't. They can't because of their donors. Just, just recently, um, Scott Walker tried to follow Trump by saying, you know, we have to do something about the anchor baby policy. One of his billionaire Republican donors said, nope, I'm against that. And suddenly Scott Walker changes his mind. So part of what Trump is doing is exposing how the Republican Party is so beholden to their donors. And the donors want the cheap labor. They want they have Spanish language TV. They're making money off of this and they don't care what happens to America. And look, this isn't good just for Americans who have been here for hundreds of years. How about the immigrants who came last year and the year before? For some reason, they decided to immigrate to America, not to immigrate to Bangladesh, to Honduras, to Mexico. That country is disappearing. The country they struggle to come to won't exist if we continue this mass dump of people from extremely different cultures and at a time when we not only have a welfare state, but we have, it's, it's, it's you know, a hate crime to try to assimilate people to what is a very successful culture. Let me jump in. You've said 10 things already. I could, spend, <laughs> I could take any one of them and spend the whole show talking about it. So I'm going to do the best I can to, to, to try to pick some of these things apart and give you a chance to respond. So first of all, we agree, you know, I want to talk about humanity and dignity. We agree that there are too many immigrants, undocumented workers, who are being exploited by Republicans and Democrats. Mm -hmm. so we agree on that. Mm -hmm. All right. What I don't think I agree with you on is that the country is getting a different kind of immigrant now than we were getting in 1965. As I read your book, and I went through this, what I see in the book is much more anecdotal, respectfully, much more anecdotal than statistical. That's my issue with Donald Trump and others who are taking anecdotes, incidents, where people do things that cannot be condoned or supported, like the undocumented worker in San Francisco. Right. The those are anecdotal. I mean, life, all life is valuable. All life is precious. But those are anecdotes. It's not statistical. So when you say we're getting a different kind of immigrant now than we had in 1965, explain that. What do you mean by that? Well, here's statistical um, and factual. Mm -hmm. 65 Immigration Act went through right at the time of the Great Society Program. So pre-1970 immigrants, and that's basically mm -hmm. when it kicked in, pre-19... 70 Im immigrants, 30% went home. They couldn't make it. Well, now nobody goes home. You go on welfare. And that's welfare meant for Americans. We have our own poor. We have our own criminals. We don't need more. Right now, 71% of illegal immigrants with children, um, i.e. anchor babies, um, are, are collecting government assistance. 71%. When you say government assistance, you mean by that, well, what are they getting? Um, all kinds of things, food stamps, um, if you have a, can claim a disability, social security disability insurance, housing aid, um, of course, schooling and, and but the, but second the, language. But these are for children who were born in this country. Well, yes. Okay, so that, how, 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 how is that, how is that, how is that, some 
illegal some foreigner getting U.S. assistance if, in fact, they were born here. Now, we can debate whether or not you think they ought to get assistance, but you can't advance the argument on this show that they're somehow foreigners getting assistance if they were born here on this soil. No, Unle unless and until, I am unless, well, that. Unless and until we change the 14th Amendment, that, that argument's got a big hole in it. Uh, no, and um, I don't want to completely bore your audience, but mm -hmm. I will say quickly, I've... I write about this in the book, sure. and I expanded it more in recent columns because um, even um, even allegedly people on my side, but speaking for cheap labor, the interests of cheap, cheap labor are claiming that was the, what the 14th Amendment was about. No, it wasn't. It was about freed slaves. 13th, 14th, 15th Amendment came after the Civil War to get an amendment attached to the Constitution. You need a mass feeling about a major subject. And Supreme Court case after Supreme Court case said this is about freed slaves. Indians didn't get citizenship. It took another, I don't know, 50 years before even the children of legal immigrants. And I think that that is incorrect. The illegal immigrants, i.e. anchor babies, that has never been, ar it has been argued, briefed, or decided by the Supreme Court. That was dicta slipped into a 1982 opinion by Justice Brennan in a f closely divided 5-4 to four decision. That's but, but, dicta. But, 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 that it, is but, but not but constitutional. It, right, but it is the law of the land. It is the it edict. It isn't, though. It is it's the, a policy that has been followed. It's the policy and the edict. Exactly. It's the edict that's been followed. And I don't, th I, let's put it to, the, to a vote. Okay, okay. Because I am confident that 80% okay, of Americans okay. would say, no, citizenship in our country should not be a game of red rose. So, with the border so, my, so my point to you is that if we want to talk about changing the policy, then let's talk about changing the policy. Yes. But demeaning those babies who were born here through no fault of their own. Oh, oh, no, it is. It's demeaning. You asked for statistics on how they no, were no, different. It's demeaning. I just gave you how they it's were different. It's demeaning, and I, and I responded by saying that if that is the way the policy is written, and that policy is, is the edict that we have followed, and these babies are born here, are considered Americans, then how do we call them anchor babies and, and in that phraseology disrespect and, and deny the dignity and the humanity of the child who had nothing to do with where he or she was born? Well, two things. First of all, I was responding to your question, how are pre-1970 immigrants different from post-1970 right. immigrants? 30% of them used to go home. Now they go on welfare, and I was citing an actual straightforward statistic to respond to the um, anecdotal points, and right. I do want to respond specifically to that, sure. too. Um, I don't think it demeans anyone. That is, there is nothing about anchor baby, and I'm so glad Donald, Donald Trump didn't back down to this. The normal Republican response when somebody yells and says you can't use that that phrase or that word is, oh, I'm sorry, we'll preemptively surrender. There is nothing sexual, racial, offensive. Anchor baby is a boating metaphor. What happens is illegal immigrants can run across the border, drop a baby, and say, ha ha, there's nothing you can do now. My kid's an American citizen. Well, that wasn't the intent of the 14th Amendment. Americans would not agree with that. It creates a horrible incentive. These babies that I agree, and the, and the mothers that you're concerned about, they're putting themselves in enormous danger. They're dying in the desert. We have put a magnet on our side of the border to create all these problems. And if I could just get back to the anecdotes point, the reason this book became in this book. It wasn't going to be about immigration. That was going to be one chapter in a much larger theme. Mm -hmm. um, and I'd written a couple of the chapters already. And then I get to the immigration chapter and I start looking for, you know, basic crime statistics. I, I know that we've had a lot of immigration. Mm -hmm. How many immigrants are in prison? And what I found was, and I'm a fanatical researcher, what I found was a massive cover-up by both the government and the media in, try, in not telling us how many immigrants are in prison. And I describe it a little bit in Chapter 7, what you can find. And so I say, look, I'd love to have the absolute numbers. How many anchor babies are in prison? How many legal immigrants? How many illegal immigrants? For what kinds of crimes and from what countries? They won't tell us that. And this is why it's become, I mean, it's become kind of a big thing now, how the headlines are always, you know, man rapes child, or Houston man rapes child. And I, I'd have to wait for the court transcripts to find out there was a court translator. Where's the evidence that these uh, undocumented workers who are having babies are doing it specifically for the reason of having anchor babies. How do we know that they aren't in love? How do we know that they aren't procreating like all the rest of us do? Where's the evidence that they are specifically laying with someone to have a baby so they can anchor themselves? Where's the evidence that suggests that? 
Well, there is some evidence, but before answering the evidence, I'd say, who cares? We're a country. We ought to be able to consent to anyone who becomes a citizen. It mm -hmm. shouldn't be a game, a game with the Border Patrol. I mean, that's kind of but, crazy. But, 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 my, point, but, but, my, but my point is calling them, calling them an anchor baby when you don't know that's what the intent but of I that pregnancy care. was. It works you should that care, way. though. No, no, no. You're asking about motive, but who, who cares? I'm, 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 I'm talking about language. I'm talking I'll get about, to the proof. Okay, go ahead. Okay. But the, it still works as an anchor, whether or not that was in their minds but yes there is evidence for one thing why would you choose when you're eight months pregnant to come across the border number two there are birthing centers we have the pamphlets we have the pamphlets saying and especially um, the pamphlets written in Chinese out here in 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 California you have all these birthing centers saying and if your child becomes a citizen you get in-state tuition you'll be able to come back anytime you want you can get an American passport you'll be they have the lists of the advantages of coming to America so, and giving birth here. So let me advance. Let me advance. Even if I, which I obviously have not and will not concede to you that argument, I think I've made my case and you've made yours, we'll move on. But even if that were the case, how does that number, the number of whatever government assistance is going to these babies born here, whatever that number is, that number, you must admit, pales, and I mean pales in comparison to the billions of dollars that are generated in this economy by those undocumented workers. So one cancels the other out no, massively. I totally contest that. You, you think, hold on, hold on, I'm going to show the record here. You think that the number of government assistance that goes to these babies outstrips the billions of dollars generated in this income by the work done by undocumented workers? You yes, the issue is where does the money go to? Um, yes, the capitalists. The it goes to those Republicans who you said right. earlier don't want to tell the truth. That's right. Because they believe the that they make money off of it. It Democrats goes too. to the very rich, but the middle class and the lower class and the working class trying to get those jobs, they're taking it up the shorts over and over hey, again. That is the most, that is the most, respectfully. That no, is the it most, has been that, proved no, hold on, eight times hold since on. Sunday. That is the most, respectfully, I, I can't put these two words in the same sentence, but it's the most absurd argument. And, well, I, and, you, and you're brilliant. Let me, let me, hold on, I, I'll let you explain it. Let me tell you why it's absurd. How many black, I don't know any black folk. I'm so tired of hearing this argument. I don't know any black folk. I certainly don't know any white folk or anybody else who's standing in line because they want to pick grapes, because they want to pick strawberries, because they want to sell oranges, because they want manicure lawns or work in kitchens or nanny babies. Where are the lines of all these Americans who they're taking these jobs from? Well, the grape picking, this is just lazy farmers refusing to mechanize. They're machines. We have robots. I mean, you have, when's the last time you've seen a bank teller? That's not my point. As my, for my the question, other my jobs, is, though, working at McDonald's, the, where, yeah. working retail, these used to be, I mean, up in, for 200 years, Americans did them. So a lot of teenagers used to do them, and the black unemployment in particular for teenage blacks it's, absolutely it's off the charts. through the roof. Exactly. A lot of these were entry-level jobs for teenagers that we're talking about. But the idea that, you know, who's going to clean our homes and do our, our, our gardening or whatever... We used to do it. Somehow Americans used to get it done. And you go to still, there's still a few states out in America. I'll, you know, call my friends and say, hey, guess what I saw on, um, you know, where's it go? Iowa. I saw Americans yeah. doing jobs Americans just but to, won't but to do. Your, but to your point, though, and if we keep being the magnet, that's the word you used earlier, mm -hmm. if we keep being the magnet to pull people here from across the border for a better life because they're willing to do that work, how then do we magnetize them, pull them over, and then blame them for coming when they were pulled well, by I the magnet. I, as you know from my book, mm -hmm. I mostly blame our, our elites. I mean, it is the elites against the middle in this case. I, I, I don't have to blame them to say that the policy has to change. Mm -hmm. No, I blame, first of all, the Democrats who wanted the voters, and now the Republicans who want the donations from from businessmen who want the cheap labor or the extra customers but uh, you can't dump millions of poor people on the country and say that is good for americans generally it is good for people who hire those laborers they get the cheap labor but americans are out of job their taxes are going to pay for instead of you know what what happened to our school pageant this year oh sorry we needed english as a second language there are so many services so many taxes going to immigrants coming in Again, we have our own poor people. We have our own criminals. And as for the anecdotal evidence, if I could jump back to that, sure. my motto is there, there are way too many immigrants who are criminals, and there shouldn't be any. We have our own criminals. We should not, not one immigrant should be a criminal. Not one immigrant should be on welfare. 
That's, we can't do anything about our native poor. We can't do anything about our native criminals. We don't need more. There are two, two things. One, your argument suggests that if these other persons weren't here, that somehow we would be fairer and better by those who are already here. I think and we would. The, well, the evidence doesn't support that. The evidence doesn't support that. And that's why black folk have been toiling for as long as they have been. Before somebody came across the border, black folks still weren't being respected. They were still the last hired and the first fired. Mm -hmm. The unemployment rate is still triple, quadruple the national mm -hmm. average. I can do this all day. The health disparity still exists. Before anybody came across the border, Negroes were still being treated, maltreated right. in the way they are right now. Right. So that evidence doesn't hold up, number one. No, but, but don't yeah. you wish all of the resources, I wish, forget what you wish, I wish all of the resources oh, yes, I wish that have been going I wish for that. immigration I wish that. have I'm been just, going to the I group wish we actually own in this country, and that's part of what I also bring up in my book, and that is, look, the reason Americans are sensitive to race, the reason we have civil rights laws, the reason we have a 14th mm -hmm. Amendment is because of the black experience in America. It is because of slavery. Mm -hmm. It is because of Jim Crow. Mm -hmm. And the idea that someone who arrived yesterday can just piggyback onto that and, and claim saying, and the I'm, same rights. Yeah. No, 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 we're sensitive to this for yeah. one reason. Right. But meanwhile, you know what affirmative action? It goes to immigrants. Why is that? We don't owe you anything. Here's my point. My, my, I, we, we agree on this. Second thing of this conversation that we agree on. We agree that it'd be nice for those resources to go where they belong. Yeah. Um, but the problem is, again, that the evidence doesn't suggest that if they hadn't run across the border or however they got here, that those persons would be being respected um, by good public policy and by budgets. Dr. King said all the time that budgets are moral documents. Budgets mm -hmm. are moral documents. So it's not as if these budgets had any real morality play in them anyway before somebody came across the border, but I'll move on from that point. It, we can't it, prove it. I think more, a lot more effort would be spent on I'm, the black community, I'm not and we'd that. be a lot farther along I'm because not, we I'm would not buying only it because have this one thing I'm to not deal buying with. It. I'm not buying it for two reasons. One, because the problem existed long before we had a no, major immigration problem. The problem of disrespecting black fellow citizens already existed, number yes, one. Yes, it did. For example, we got, we got people running across the border every day. Negroes are still getting shot in the streets by white cops all the time. Every other and day you see that. And by Mexicans. But, that, but that, my, my point which is... Which is another one that's yeah. hidden, by the but, way. But, you know how he talks about crimes of immigrants being hidden? One yeah. thing that is massively hidden, and you know out here in L.A., the, the Mexican attacks on the black community out here. It's ferocious, and it does not get reported. The black and brown issue is real, no doubt about that. But when you consider how tightly black and, and how closely black and brown live in certain parts of this city and in this state, and for that matter, New York City, those incidents pale in comparison, again, to the peace that exists every day amongst neighbors who live in those tight environments. I digress. Let me move okay. on. From a strategic point of view, how is this issue a winning issue for the party, given the massive growth of the Latino, Hispanic, Chicano electorate? How is it a winning strategy? I knew it would be a winning strategy, and when you see Trump's poll numbers, you see that it is. The reason it's, it's early. a winning strategy... It's early. It's still very impressive. You think, he, you think he's going to be the nominee? I don't know. Right, uh, right now... You, think he, you he, think he really has a chance to be the nominee, ultimately? He has... I mean, I keep, it's weird, I keep reading in the, in the, in the like, New York Times mm -hmm. how, yeah, well, maybe Biden will get in, but mm -hmm. Hillary's lead, it's in the Super Bowl. Wait, if her lead is in the Super Bowl, yeah. then why isn't Donald Trump? But, but even if, but even His if, is better but, than but, hers. But even if he won the primary, even if he won the, 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 the primary election, becomes the Republican nominee, even if that were to happen, do you believe, back to my point, that that's a winning strategy yes. in the general election? 100 percent. Tell, me, tell I, me why so. Well, I argue this in the, in the last chapter, that... Uh, Republicans have been have been falling for this for for decades, and I guess PBS as the audience isn't isn't Republicans, but this is advice <laughs> for Republicans. Hey, we got Republicans who <laughs> watch. Trust is, me. <laughs> um, when Reagan was running, for example, there were a lot of Republicans back then, and it annoys me that they think it's like a cutting edge issue now. Yeah, there were a lot of Republicans back then who were um, pro-abortion, anti-gun, pro-equal rights amendment. Mm -hmm. You don't even hear about those anymore. Mm -hmm. Ronald Reagan came along. No, and for the first time it was taken out of the Republican platform, the support for the uh, Equal Rights Amendment. He was absolutely pro-life, he was absolutely pro-gun, and it turns out, wow, we can win with these issues. Well, they're doing it again to the Republicans now, and these idiot Republicans think they can say, I'm like Reagan by being um, anti-abortion. 
All Republicans are anti-abortion now. Once the hero of 9-11, Rudy Giuliani, couldn't get the time of day because he was pro-abortion, no, no Republican running for president again is ever going to be pro-abortion or pro-choice, however you want to put it. Mm -hmm. um, what Trump is doing is, is appealing to the vast majority. Why do you want to keep you don't see the Democrats, for example, saying, you know, we need more evangelicals to vote for us. We need more gun rights supporters. No, appeal to your base. Drive the base vote up. George Bush, the second George Bush, ran the biggest Hispanic operation you've ever seen out of the White House. He had Spanish language web page at the White House. He gave a weekly address in Spanish. He campaigned with that half Mexican um, nephew of his like it was an extra appendage. He still lost the Hispanic vote. Getting a small percentage of what, additional percentage of what is already a minority of the electorate, that's not how you, you win. And I would add here, you know where um, Bush got the lowest black vote? Wherever he got the highest Hispanic vote. The votes seem to be in reverse because a lot of regular um, black people do seem you, to think that they're being hurt by immigrants. Do, do you see the irony in the fact that those rich elite that you talked about earlier, that Donald Trump is the poster boy for them? He's the quintessential example of exactly what you're talking about is wrong with America? I think it's incredibly courageous and patriotic, and I'm so glad you point that out, mm. because I'm always making fun of Hollywood people acting like, you know, they're taking a brave, courageous position, coming out in favor of abortion or an anti-Christianity. Well, no, in your neighborhoods, you're going to get a standing ovation for that. Donald Trump actually is the glamorous New York plutocrat and he's the one speaking up for the middle class and the lower class. These other guys go and out and eat corn dogs at the Iowa State Fair, and they're the ones speaking for the why, billionaires. Why, 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 is, why is it that, as opposed to what I believe it is, that Donald Trump is, is appealing to the base in too many voters, the base part of these voters? He's appealing to people who've decided to become more nativist, uh, to, to turn inward and to attack anything outward that they think is holding them out holding them back as opposed to speaking truth to power. Why can't he just be appealing to the worst instincts in well, those persons? I don't think it, your, your nativism is my patriotism. Mm -hmm. And he always has had, I mean, if you look up, they claim he's changed positions on this or that. He has always cared about Americans first and not just, I, I mean, black Americans, Hispanic Americans, but we're on a lifeboat. I, I don't, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know when and where Donald Trump cared about black Americans except those on Celebrity Apprentice. I don't know <laughs> where the evidence is that he cared about Negroes in America, but there there's a fine line you'll admit between patriotism and nationalism, and one is dangerous. Well, how does it get dangerous protecting the people who already live here? It, 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 gets, it, it, gets dangerous, do... it gets dangerous when you start preaching this message of American exceptionalism that we are right and everybody else is wrong and get out and go home. That's, 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 that's moving beyond well, you're patriotism. Mixing two things. No, I'm not mixing. We're I'm just saying right. patriotism morphs into nationalism is it a dangerous thing. It doesn't have to be we are right, we're wrong. It can just be we're going to do the best thing for our people, which is, I think, what politicians are supposed to do. Last question. Why is it that with every generation of immigrants, whoever they may be, well, we, when we came here, we kicked the Native Americans in the teeth, and they were already here when we bumped into them. But then, whether it's black or brown or Italian, Ben Franklin, do the research, had issues Germans. with Germans. He thought the Germans were going to ruin right. America. <laughs> the point is that every, every group of immigrants always gets kicked in the teeth. They always get scapegoated. And why is that? Well, for one thing, I mean, I'm... I'm not fully joking when I say Benjamin Franklin was right. I mean, we would be living in a much more Germanic country. Each one of these waves has been met with, whoa, this is too many. We're changing our culture. And there has usually been a pause in immigration. For example, in the 20s, 1924, basically total moratorium for the next 40 years. It was the most prosperous period of American history, just in leaps and bounds for the people already here. You have to save the lifeboat for people who are already here. Or the immigrants who came and the Americans who have been here, it, nobody's being helped by that. Save the country first. The author of 10 New York Times bestsellers. This is 11. This is 11. I'm about to say that. You took my line. <laughs> Number 11. Adios America, the less plan to turn our country into a third world hellhole. So hard to say, but uh, <laughs> and good to have you on the program. Thank you. Good to be here. That's our show for tonight. Thanks for watching, and as always, keep the faith.